All right. Welcome back, everybody, to a new episode of the Second and Long Football Podcast. My name is Joe, and we have another solo episode going today. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. I've, I've thought about it a lot. I've been wanting to do it, and I finally got around to it. And as you can see by the title, today we are going to be talking about a certain Jalen Rieger, or Rager. One of the two. Pick whichever works for you. But uh, we're going to dive into him today. So I figured this would be an interesting one. Uh, I mean, I can't think of a lot of other people that would be willing to sit through 17 Eagles games and specifically filtering through to find clips of Jalen Rager. So let's just start off with this. Let's just start off with how most people have come to know Jalen Rager. So he was drafted a few years back by the Philadelphia Eagles to to play wide receiver. He's a wide receiver. That's what I know. That's That's who I look at. And ever since then, it has been the internet's consensus that this guy is a complete bust, completely unredeemable. He's like he's terrible. He's awful. Like the essentially a younger Nelson Aguilar, which that's that's a lot. That's a lot to say about. Uh, this guy who's who's so young. Actually, how how old is he? I, I if I had to guess, I would say he's about twenty two. Let's see here, Jalen Rager. Da da da. Age. Okay, he's tw- uh, Huh, about twenty three years old. That's what Google says. That's an interesting one. I, I've never seen Google come out with an estimate for someone's age. But okay, he's about 23. And what's interesting to me is just just how much hate he gets. In fact, actually, what I have here as well is um, I follow another page on Instagram that goes over, you know, all kinds of football news sort of compiles it all into one place. And I have a screenshot of the comments of a post about Jalen Rager trade rumors uh, that happened just before the draft. And after this episode, uh, after I've um, given my opinion on the matter, uh, I'm going to read those off and we're going to see how how close those comments are to what I have to say today. And so, now we have that built. All right, we have our base. We know where we're where we're going off from. So, that was what obviously me and pretty much everyone else thought before I went into this. And I went through and I watched all Technically, 18 games, including the wild card game against the Buccaneers, specifically uh, looking for plays involving Jalen Rager to truly find out if he is the abysmal bust that we have come to know. And, oh man, it was it was an experience uh, putting this one together. Uh, first, I'm going to say that, uh, I wasn't able to watch the entire games. I, uh, I'll try to put something on screen right about here that, uh, will show what I'm looking at while I'm doing this film analysis. And it's, it's not that good. The, the quality at least is, uh, pretty bad. It's pretty subpar so what sitting through and figuring out how good of a run blocker he is that 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 wasn't really gonna happen at, at least not this time but uh so what i did was i went through every play 
that he was directly involved in every target, every kickoff, every run, every penalty. I saw it all. I saw every single play involving Jalen Rager from this most recent season. And I'm going to start off this analysis by talking to Jalen directly. Because, of, of course, 100% he's going to listen to this. I, I don't see any way he doesn't. But I'm going to start off talking to him directly. All right. Jalen, I would like to represent the entire NFL online community by saying, I am so sorry. Your name has been drug through the mud and absolutely just pounded into the ground. And it has been completely and utterly unwarranted. And my heart goes out to you. It really does. That, that's a lot to take. That, that, that really is the, the memes online and the, and, and the hate that comes from these memes. That, that's a lot. And I sincerely, sincerely apologize. So, what are my thoughts on Jalen Rager? I will start by saying he is not bad at all. By no stretch is he, like, the absolute bust that people think he is. And we'll start here. I'll... I I have so... I have so many notes on this guy. So many. And what I found out of... The 57 targets that he had throughout the season, and I don't know, about, if I had to guess, maybe eight, nine runs, which were mostly uh, jet sweeps and things of that nature, so just handing it off to him as he comes across the field and tries to take it vertically. Uh, Out of all of that, I found somewhere between five to seven plays that I truly consider lowlights. And this is, that that was interesting to me. I thought a player of this standing that I was gonna find way more. I thought it was gonna be like half of every play was gonna, like half of the plays that I looked at were just gonna be total, just, just, just disgusting. I thought I was gonna be disgusted by his play. And I honestly can't say I was. He, There's so much potential here. There really is. But his lowlights were... Let's just go over a couple of them. Um, On One one of the first ones that I saw was week three against Dallas. He was running a comeback route, which is essentially you're faking a, a fade route, and you're coming back. You're turning around, you turn over the shoulder closest to the sideline, your outside shoulder, and you're aiming for a catch on the sideline, essentially just to steal some yards from, you know, from the defense. And what kind of confused me was I wasn't sure if he was exactly running a comeback because he he turned the wrong way. Uh, He turned inside. And because he turned inside, the uh, the corner that was covering him, uh, he he had a chance to come in and make a play on the ball. He drops it, and you know that was the first play out of the first three weeks where I was like, ugh, that that was probably mostly his fault. Uh, let's see, there was there were a couple others here. Oh yeah, uh, week nine against my Chargers, which. Uh, we, we scraped out of that one. Uh, I believe the score was 27 to 24. We, we barely got out of that game. And, uh, he only had this catch and he lost, I want to say about eight yards on, and we'll get into this specifically on a screen and that he had no chance. Uh, Uchenna Nwosu, uh, our, former defensive end, had a perfect read on the play, cut off the screen, and and he was just hemmed in. But he tried to run backwards, sort of pull a Tyree kill, reverse field, and, you know, confuse the defense, and, and that just didn't happen at all. Uh, 
Linebacker Kaiser White was also there, so he he was hemmed in, tried to make a play, and it didn't work. And he could have gone forward and maybe lost, I don't know, two yards. But instead, he decided to go backwards and lose eight. So there, there are a couple plays in here that, you know, you could say, you know, he made the best out of the situation, or you could say, uh, that was, that, that just wasn't good. That just wasn't good play by him. But in my opinion now, and that's my, that's everything I have to say on lowlights. That, that was about it. He, he didn't really have that much else that just outright disgusted me. Every other play, that I saw where it was either an incompletion or something along those lines, it it's all perfectly explainable. And uh, for example, take uh, week 10 uh, against Denver. Uh, there was one time where he, he got open and the offensive line broke down. Uh, a defender got through just completely unblocked and Hertz tried to run and he tried to get it out his way ball bounces on the ground that's still a target for Jalen and that still goes on the stats as a uh, as an incompletion and in that same game he made a beautiful sideline catch and snagged 12 yards from uh, from the defense and there's just so much positive, like so much good that I saw from watching all of these games that it just baffled me that we just like take week, uh, week seven, week seven, his, uh, his final play in that game was a catch in essentially triple coverage. All of the defenders bounced off of one another they were all in traffic, and he peels around off of them and walks in for an easy touchdown, which he only had two in the season, but we'll, we'll get more into that as well. And, man, these games were, and all these plays were so frustrating to watch from, like, a, uh, from a coaching perspective. All of these games were so frustrating. So, I had to go through and count this. For specifically for this, uh, for this point here. Oh my. Uh, they ran. How many? So, uh, let's start here. Let's start here. Uh, he had 33 catches on the season. Which... Compared to most receivers, that's that's a pretty low number. And he had 299 yards. So we didn't really do that well. His, um, As many people know, it got turned to a meme that his, uh, his biggest game of this past year was uh, a 57-yard game. Which, uh, that's like the bare minimum of a good game nowadays in the NFL. Is about 50, 60 yards is... You know, that's more or less the, yeah, you, you, you contributed. That's nothing special, but nothing too good either. And out of those 33 catches, 14 of them were screens. 14 of them. Which that makes up 42% of his total catches started at the line of scrimmage. Which goes a long way to explaining why Jalen Rager just doesn't get yards. Pretty much all of his plays start at the line of scrimmage. And with that, the his fellow receivers, being last year Devontae Smith and uh, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, and there's one other, but I'm, I'm forgetting his name right now, uh, they, they can't block. They can't. And the couple times that they did, he actually would manage like 10 yards out of it. He would have really good runs. Like they, it impressed me when, uh, when the blocking was even like 
almost at par, when it was almost good blocking, he he could make something out of it. He has really good field vision. I was really impressed by it, actually. But, God, for... And so many of these screens are ran so slowly by the offense. They, they give the defense every opportunity to set up and just dogpile this man. Because... And he's, he's not all that big. He's 5'11", 190 pounds. He's about an inch taller than me and about the same size. So, not a giant dude. And when the coach says, hey, you know what? You're going to start at the line of scrimmage. We're just going to give you the ball in the wide open field with two 230-pound linebackers that can both squat 600 pounds. Good luck. That's that's what you get to be known for. You get to be known for trying to shuck off those guys. Oh, and if you can't, the entire internet will hate you forever. Just because. Just for the sake of it. And God, all they would do with him is run screens. And they ran two types. They ran just sort of base screens where he just takes a step and turns back to the quarterback. Uh, that's a pretty just simple... Just basic wide receiver screen. And then they also ran another type of screen called tunnel screens. Or they're more commonly known as jailbreak screens. Where he comes back inside towards the quarterback and towards the offensive line. Who peel off of their men and sort of create a tunnel. Or they create a hole for him to try to run through. And those are seldomly successful. One of them he actually did get a touchdown on. And that was back in week three, I want to say. Uh, somewhere in here. Uh, oh, week one. It was week one against the Falcons. Uh, the blocking was actually really good. The offensive linemen were able to get out there, which most of the time they couldn't. And he outran the defense and 23-yard touchdown. And... That was my first moment where I was like, wait, this this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. This this isn't just an abysmal receiver. This is actually fairly good. And that's that's only one part. One part they run they only run him with screens. They run almost exclusively screens. But what else I saw is that he is amazing after the catch. He actually reminded me a little bit of uh, Debo Samuel, uh, the receiver currently on the 49ers, as sort of like a prototype where he's so good in the open field at making pretty good defenders miss. Multiple times he made linebackers and defensive ends just whiff off of him, and he would get a few extra yards, like an extra four to five every time he shuck someone off and you know that was that was really cool to see that was like i was impressed multiple times by his ability after the catch to uh to get his own yards and fight for extra and i want to say it was week 18 against dallas where they actually lined him up at at a halfback and they ran a toss with him and that was really cool that was you know, that sort of confirmed my suspicion of like, hey, I mean, if this whole wide receiver thing doesn't work out, I, I honestly think he could have a spot as sort of that that prototype, being able to take handoffs and actually do quite a bit with them. And obviously he did have a couple times, like in that same game, week 18, uh, try, in his att attempt to make uh, DeMar DeMarcus Lawrence... I think that's his name. Yeah, uh, he tried to make him miss, and he did, but he went a little hard, and he slipped. Which happens to everybody. You know, people slip all the time, and, you know, I don't I don't see that as a low light. I see that as, I don't know, go to the sideline and sweep your cleats off, and you're, you're good to go again. And with... Pretty much any short to intermediate route that I saw Jalen Rager run, 
I was surprised at the separation that he was able to make, especially on drag routes. This guy runs an amazing drag route and gets really good separation, and he knows how to break off. The problem is Jalen Hurts can't throw short to intermediate. Honestly, he struggles with throwing entirely. Uh, Throughout these 18 games, watching Jalen Hurts throw to Jalen Rager, I'm not going to lie, I was infuriated with Jalen Hurts' performance. I I just could, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. He, he missed him so many times. It was either just completely missing him, just outright, but, you know, on the stat sheet, Jalen Rager still gets a target, and then more, you know, meme creators are like, ha, look at that. He has 57 targets, only 33 catches. Ha! But so many of them were just Jalen Hurts whiffing. Just either throwing it to where, throwing it into coverage. He did that so many times. He threw so many passes just straight into coverage. Like, Rager is clearly not open. He's clearly locked up by his corner. And Hurts is like, eh, we'll test it anyway. We'll see. I, th- I think he, I think he can catch it, sure. When when he's currently being locked down by Trayvon Diggs and safety helps coming, eh, he he can try to get it. And if not, we'll just blame it on him, and then he'll get cut, and then he'll be out of the league, and I'll still be going, still throwing absolute garbage for my entire career. <laughs> uh, God, it was it was actually I want to say it was week. Was it? I want to say it was either week sixteen or seventeen where I saw uh, Minshew come in, Gardner Minshew, uh, the Eagles' backup, and I actually I liked all, everything I saw from Minshew. Minshew was actually able to put the uh, ball in some pretty creative places for uh, his receivers to get it, and one was actually a really nice one that uh, uh, it was week thirteen. Uh, against, God, I want to say it was the Jets. I want to say they were playing the Jets. And uh, Jalen Rager had this amazing cutback on a broken play. He, he was running towards the inside of the field, and the play sort of broke down. Uh, the quarterback started to run, and Rager cut for the sideline after taking his defender really far in, which was really smart by him because that gave him the most space from his defender and Minshew read that put the ball out there and just let him go get it and it it was really cool that uh Minshew was able to make that read in that moment and put the ball out for Rager in a really good place and man I I will I will give you guys this one thing that he does struggle with is fades uh, when he his release is a little suboptimal, but uh, even if he's running a short route, he still seems to be able to get away with having bad releases and still finding ways to create space either by where he directs his release or his, how he hand fights, how he cuts. He's able to create space on those short routes, but when he's just running a straight line, he he can't seem to create much space and. Not to mention that Hertz can't throw those at all, uh, at least from everything I saw. And man, it just it it bums me out that everyone hates this guy because I I just don't see it. I just see a victim of horrible circumstance. And to make matters worse, they traded. During the draft, the Eagles traded for wide receiver A.J. Brown. Now, for the Eagles, that's an amazing move, obviously. Obviously, A.J. Brown is an amazing receiver. There is no question about that. He's he's absolutely fantastic, and if you have the chance to go get him, you absolutely should. But in the case of Jalen Rager, that doesn't really make it look good. That does not make his situation any better and uh before i wrap this video up 
I want to talk about about uh, I want to talk about one more game. I want to talk about Week Six against the Buccaneers, who they would later go on to play in the wild card and lose. But I want to talk about two plays in particular. Uh, his first target of the game for Jalen Rager was a 50-yard fade route, which he actually got really good separation on. He actually got past uh, his defender, and Jalen Hurts, being Jalen Hurts, horrifically underthrew the fade. He didn't give Rager much of a chance. And because of this, Rager had to stop, giving the corner time to catch up, and the corner just rips him to the ground. Just rips him down, ball bounces off the ground, but P.I. is called. And the ball is moved up, like, almost to the line of scrimmage. Not the line of scrimmage, Jesus. Uh, the To the goal line, almost. And that drive ended in a Jalen Hurts pick, because of course it did. But, so that was 50 yards and a touchdown lost for Rager. And fast forward to later in the game on another fade where once again, he has like two steps on, I want to say it was Carlton Davis that was covering him. And I mean, he had good separation too. He had an okay release and just blew past him because Jalen Rager is actually pretty quick. And what happens? He gets shoved to the ground. He Just as the ball was about to touch his hands, well, probably about a second before the ball's about to get there, he's just pushed from the back, and he face plants, ball bounces off his hands, and another P.I. is called. If Jalen Hurts, and also I do put a bit of that on Jalen Hurts because it was another underthrow, and he had to slow down again. He, he was slowed by an underthrow and then pushed in the back. I believe if he caught it, Carlton Davis would not have been able to catch up due to the amount of space he had. So, in that game alone, he was robbed of around 125 yards and two touchdowns. Blew me away to see that. And people call... This guy, just completely awful. When he's getting pushed from the back, all of his plays start at the line of scrimmage, and he has a quarterback that can't throw deep and struggles with throwing short intermediate routes on time. That's his biggest problem with short to intermediate. Jalen Hurts doesn't throw on time. Most of his throws are late, and that costs Rager catches and yards. So, what do I think overall of Jalen Rager? I think, like I said earlier, he is a victim of terrible circumstance in Philly. He is a victim of low light bias, which uh, for me means that he. Low lights get put out of him, and that is what people think he is. They think he's just as low lights. Same thing could happen with, you know, take someone like Sammy Watkins. If you looked at Sammy Watkins' highlights, you'd think he's a top 10 receiver in the league. Like, if you looked at a few highlights from, like, I don't know, six or seven years ago, you'd think, you would think he's one of the best wide receivers in the league. When he's just not. That's just not what his total play says. And I think the same thing goes the opposite way for Rager. People think, because he has a couple plays that look really bad, that he's just awful. But, just completely. I don't think that at all. If he stays in Philly, which I really hope he doesn't, I so hope that he gets out of Philly. It's a terrible place for him. The The quarterback's too new. Uh, the, he's buried in the roster now. And... It just wouldn't be a good move for him to stay for his career. He, he needs to get on the field, and he needs to show what he can do with a quarterback that can throw. So for this year, I think even buried down on the roster spot that he has, I think he could easily at least repeat his stats from this past year or do even better. 
like 400 yards. And that's as a wide receiver, like a wide receiver three to a wide receiver four, depending on whether they put uh, J.J. Arcega Whiteside over him or not. But I believe if Jalen Rager can get on a team where he's either the wide receiver two or the wide receiver three, maybe like Baltimore or something like that, I honestly believe he could have an 800-yard season. Minimum. Like, I wholeheartedly believe that. That he could pull that off. Not, not a shadow of a doubt. This guy is so athletic. He's quick. He's smart. And I am honestly rooting for him. I am pulling for him so much that it just boggles my mind when I see comments on the internet about him, like these ones, which I'm now going to read to you. These are, uh, this is off of Trade Rumors, uh, a post on Instagram, uh, talking about the fact that he was rumored to be traded, which, please, Eagles, trade him somewhere. Just anywhere where Jalen Hurts is not throwing him the football. Uh, but let's see what the internet has to say about Jalen Rager's, tr Jalen Rager's trade rumors. Uh, the first one says, you'll get him for a can of Diet Pepsi. Nobody calling. Best we can do is ha a half-eaten bag of Doritos and a SpongeBob eraser. Uh, the next one says, on behalf of the Atlanta Falcons, I offer you a bag of Fritos and a paperclip, but only if you accept in the next 48 hours. Uh, the next one says, a 2096 seventh, take it or leave it. Next one, I heard the Tampa Bay Bandits are interested. And the last one is a ninth round pick. Which, for those of you who do not know, does not exist. Unless you count the supplemental draft. Which, I don't think anyone counts the supplemental draft. But, does that sound like the guy that I was just talking about? Does that sound like him at all in any context i don't think it does and i wish the absolute best for jalen rager i really hope that he is able to get off that team and go somewhere where he actually has a chance at the ball and he has a coach that knows that he is capable of more than uh tunnel screens uh and i just really hope that this episode gets out and some people start finally cutting Jalen Rager a little bit of slack. And that is all I have for you guys this time. Thank you so much for listening. This has been a little bit of a uh, passion project for me. I've been wanting to get going at this one for a while, but... Uh, I've been caught up with a lot of things recently, and I'm just finally really happy I got around to it. Uh, let me know uh, who you want me to uh, look at next, uh, who you want me to break down and look at. Uh, and for the record, I won't be doing any Devontae Adams or DeAndre Hopkins or anyone like that, because obviously they're great. Like, there's just, there's just no... No doubt. I like doing players like this because, you know, players that uh, should either get a little bit more respect or be humbled a little bit uh, and not the just absolute top shelf. Because, like, if I were to do an episode on Cooper Cup, it's pretty obvious what I would have to say about him. Because, you know, of course he's incredible. Like, duh. Right? Uh, but thank you guys for listening. Uh, I'm Joe, and we will see you guys in the next one. <laughs>